with Miss Claire Avery. I'll ring through and tell her you're here. Thank you. Oh, Miss Avery, well, there's a gentleman to see you in reception. Marcia Landon. Beautiful, strange, tragic. An unhappy girl who became one of the most talked about actresses of our time. Two weeks ago, desperate and alone, she took her life with an overdose of sleeping pills. Millions of people knew her face, but very few knew the real woman. I did. Hello, Claire. Did I keep you waiting? No, just a second arrived. What a tragedy, huh? That's why I asked you to call for me. Oh? Marcia Landon was murdered. Murdered? Oh, I know legally it was suicide, but she was murdered. And I also know the only person who cares enough to do anything about it is you, Simon Templer. <laughs> to her, weren't you? Yes. Right up until the time she died, I tried to help her. But there was nothing I could do. She was beyond help. Claire, why don't you start from the beginning? Very few people knew what really happened. It was the night before she was due to start to make a picture for Mike Sentinel. Mm -hmm. She'd been working late on a dress fitting and was coming down the stairs. The place was dark, completely deserted. As she was about to leave, someone called her name. There was a man standing in the shadow by that corridor. She turned to see who it was. And in that fraction of a second, she was disfigured for life. He'd thrown acid in her face. Somehow, she managed to get back to her dressing room and call Mike Sentinel. He rushed over with the doctor, but there was nothing they could do. He took her to the best plastic surgeon. He said he could repair most of the damage. But Marcia knew that she'd never make another picture. Unless they managed to keep it out of the press. Mike has ways of keeping things quiet. The papers were told she was ill. What about the man? Was she able to describe him? No, it was so dark. She got a quick glimpse of a cap and a scarf over the face, raincoat. It's not much to go on, is it? No. Anyway, when she came out of hospital, she refused to see anyone at all. She used to go for walks with me sometimes, always after dark. Mostly she was alone. Then one night she became so desperate and frightened she took sleeping pills. Hello, Claire. Hello, Mike. Oh, Mike Sentinel, Simon Temple. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Sheila, my wife. Your table is ready, sir. How do you do? Yeah, thank you. Oh, you have eaten pity, otherwise we could have had something together. See you later anyway. Yes. Goodbye. The police never found the man. No. And tomorrow, I start a new picture with Mike, playing the lead, Marcia's part. How do you feel about it? It's not the way I wanted it to happen. Well, she's no Marcia Landon. No, there'd never be another Marcia. No, the sooner you face that day, the better. If only I'd realized how desperate she was. Okay. 
You did all you could to help. No one in the world could have stopped Marcia Landon from killing herself. No, I suppose not. I don't even care. I don't. And what? Well, don't go on and on about what good friends those two were. Marcia's funeral, Claire could hardly stop herself applauding. <laughs> Can I have a word with you a minute? Yes, of course. Let's get out of the way, shall we? Look, uh, I signed a contract to co-star in this picture with Marcia Lander. Which, for obvious reasons, is impossible now. <laughs> yes, but I didn't expect to be stuck with this completely unknown girl. Well, who's ever May heard I of Claire Avery? Suggestion? I wish you would. Look, you're the actor. I'm the director. And you and I know we have to do what the producer tells us to do. Oh, very funny, considering you happen to be the producer. Oh, you remembered. Good boy. You remember that and your lines. We'll all be happy. I think you're making a terrible mistake about Claire Avery. She hasn't got star quality. Honestly, Mike, everyone's saying it. The girl's got nothing. No experience, no background. Well, we all know she hasn't got your background. My darling, I think you're losing your judgment. You get hold of girls of 20, like Claire or Marcia. <laughs> all they've got are bus measurements and you, Mike Sentinel, my old darling, as a friend. You and I have done a lot of pictures together. This could be the last. Is that a threat? Because if it is, don't try it. I can be twice as ruthless as you or anybody you've ever met in your whole life. Hi for me, Johnny. No, sorry, Miss Grumble. No one loves you this morning. Who are those for? Oh, Miss Avery. Hey, now, I wonder who you're from. Oh, me, of course. Who else? Listen, Johnny, let me give you a little tip for when you're a big, successful producer. Once you start giving your leading lady flowers, it's very difficult to stop without making yourself look a great big... Never mind. Naughty, naughty. I'll bring you a nice big saucer of milk and then you'll be happy. Chocolates, racing tips, flowers from the producer. For me? No, for me. But you know the film business. People talk. My faith in you is boundless, Mike Sentinel. Oh, that's nice. I'll remember that. Oh, that's sweet. And look at these flowers. Behave yourself, Johnny Newman. You're wanted on set right away. Oh, there's your letters. Oh, Hang on a minute. I'll come with you. Here. Did you hear about the optician who had to get rid of two of his monocles? Because, because they were making a spectacle of themselves. Well, I thought it was funny anyway. Thanks. Good luck, darling. Thanks, Johnny. letter. It came with my mail this morning. Well, don't say anything about this to anybody, you understand? I'm terrified. Yes, Claire, I know these things are frightening. But it might just be a nasty little joke. I'll get out of the studio as fast as I can. All right, Simon. Please hurry. Please. I will. Claire, darling. Come in. I just came to wish you luck. Look at all those telegrams and those flowers. Aren't they marvellous? Are they from your parents? No, Mr. Sentinel sent them. How very thoughtful. How many pictures have you done with him? Oh, this must be about the seventh. I wish it were my seventh. You're going to be marvellous. Everybody's saying so. No, thank you. But you mustn't be frightened. After all, here you are in the star dressing room. 
I should think Marcia Landon was just as frightened as you are sitting right here waiting to be called onto the set. And you're the new Marcia Landon. I really don't. You know, you've got exactly the same eyes, the same mouth. Do you mind if I have another look at the script? No, of course. Very good idea. And remember, we're all pulling for you. Thank you. What happened to Marcia Landon will happen to you unless you leave 5,000 pounds in five pound notes in the script compartment of your own chair on the set by six o'clock tomorrow night. And if you call the police, I will make you wish you were dead. Simon, why me? I don't know. I suppose you've been told you look a little like Marcia Landon. Yes. Do you have anything else in common? Well, she was first choice for this part. When she died, I replaced her. I suppose that could make people jealous. Anybody in particular? Simon, everybody in this business thinks I shouldn't be doing this part. Why? I think I'm inexperienced. I am. I know this. Is there anyone who could have a grudge against Mike Sentinel? Five, four, three, two, one. We're off. Go away, Johnny. There's a dear. Well, you're wanted on the set. I'm not coming on the set. Well, you're joking. I'm not joking. Well, what am I going to tell Mr. Sentinel? Tell him I'm not coming on the set. That's plain English, or don't you understand it? Well, I do. I hope he does. This I shall nip in the butt. The only way. If you don't sit on them right from the start, they walk all over you. Not over me. You see, Mike, this girl has so little professional experience, she can't even... Shut up! What's keeping her? Well, she's got some character in her dress room, and she says she's not coming on the set. What's going on, Johnny? Oh, I don't know. She looks scared stiff to me. I'm not surprised. He's trying to build her up into another Marsha Landon. It's too much for any girl. Oh, Mr. Templer. Under ordinary circumstances, I'd be delighted to see you. Today, I am not. Have you any idea what it costs me when you're 15 minutes late on the set? I think you'd better read what came with the morning mail. I'll call the police at once. No, Mike, wait. You're not seriously suggesting we should pay? I saw Marcia's face after it happened. I know what this man can do. I just want to run away as far as possible. Claire, I don't blame you for being afraid. I will never be another Marcia Landon. I haven't the talent. Won't you let me be the judge of that? I can't do it, Mike. I'm sorry. Don't use this as an excuse for running away. Do you want to give up your career? Of course not. Simon, what am I going to do? Claire, it's not in you to be acquitted. I'm frightened. Yes, I know you are. You let Mr. Templer take you home. And tomorrow... And tomorrow, Mr. Sentinel, I suggest you call the police. Then we'll plant the 5,000 pounds, as instructed, and wait to see who picks it up. Telling you, if you stand around on the set all day, Inspector, you'll frighten him off. And Mr. Templer won't, Sam. I'm a friend of Claire's. Besides, most of the people on the set know me. Oh, pity. I'd like to have seen how you do your filming. Anyway, you can watch this during the day, and if it's still there by six tonight, uh, I'll take over. I'll give it to Claire straight away. I hope I see that 5,000 again. Uh, you will, Sam. With interest. This, plus whoever's hoping to collect. Unless you leave 5,000 pounds in the script compartment of your own chair. You know, whoever wrote this knows what the inside of a studio looks like, doesn't he, sir? Yes. 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 Yes
stand here. Hurry it up now, please. Hurry it up. in pictures, Mr. Templer. I don't have that kind of talent. Talent, Mr. Templer? How very old-fashioned of you. Who needs talent these days? Especially with Mike Sentinel directing. You didn't know that Irene originally came from the circus, did you, Mr. Templer? No, I didn't. One of the best knife throwers in the business, especially in the back. Excuse me. Clear, please. Coming. Sorry, Ellen. Sorry, Johnny. My script's here all the time. Sorry. Hey, about the optician had to get rid of two of his monikers because, because they, they were, were making, making a spectacle of themselves. No, I haven't heard it. <laughs> Johnny. Huh? You worked with Marcia Landon a great deal, didn't you? What was she like? Well, to work with? Oh, wonderful. Sweet as they come. Thoughtful, generous. She made me feel as I was really someone. Well, you are someone, aren't you? Third Johnny! assistant. You must be joking. Johnny! Just a second. Now, Ernie, go on that one on the kicker aisle again, please. What's the matter? All right. Visitors. Right, red light, please. Right, now we're going for a take, so can I have it quiet, please? Right, sir. All right, turn over. Turn him over. Run in. Mark it. 118, take eight. Action. And you expect me to be tolerant? Just laugh it off and say it's pressure of work? Well, under the circumstances... Cut it. Oh. Camera reloading. Get the red. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Fair, considering the strain you're working under, you deserve a medal for remembering anything. Okay. Just take it easy and relax. I'll try. Then you can give it a fall. Yes, that's right. see if he's got any reaction in the end. Yes, okay. Right, red light, please. <laughs> Right, get quiet now. Dear little Miss Avery, not only has she no talent, she has no I memory. Know. Will you give me quiet, please? Turn right, turn over. Turn over. Mark it. 124, take nine. Come over. Action. Then what do you want out of marriage? A little consideration. Oh. Keep turning, keep turning. She can't even remember her name, let alone her lines. Then what do you want out of marriage? Time. A little consideration, but especially time. I just want to see you. Cut it! Very nice, that's it. That's it, boys. Good the last two. Thanks, fellas, that's it for today. Say the red. Goodbye, we must meet soon. Bye, dear. Well done, boys. It's all right. Good night. Thank you very much, everybody. That's a wrap. Nothing happened? No, I guess he was scared off. What do we do now? I buy you a sumptuous dinner, then I take you home. Well, there's 
See you in the entrance, quarter of an hour. Fine. Ah, there you are. Uh, any luck? Nothing. Oh, well, the day isn't over yet. I'll be here till ten, and I'll get somebody else to take over. Okay. Ah, good night. Good night. I can just see the headlines. Beautiful actress threatened. You think I'd allow Claire to go through all this as a publicity stunt? Claire's picture in every front page in town? You've absolutely no idea what I'm really like, have you? Oh, my dear man, I know you inside out. You're driving and you're ruthless. You'd walk over your dear old mother if you thought it would get you ahead. Oh. I made you angry. <laughs> Don't be, I admire you for it. You do, eh? Well, certainly. It's the reason why you're here today. Reason why I have this coat. All right, pull the breakers. It's okay. I'll be in my office. Good night. Oh, good night. Sleep well, Inspector. Wasn't she lovely? Very. You knew her pretty well, didn't you? Hmm. About as well as anyone, I suppose. Well, what about her relatives? Where are they? Oh, her parents died when she was little. She has a brother somewhere, I believe. Oh, really? Where? Birmingham, I think she said. She never spoke about him very much. Oh, you've met him, surely? Oh, no. Didn't he come to the funeral? No, he couldn't. He's an invalid of some sort. In a nursing home, I think, she said. I know she's been paying his bills for him for years. She left some sort of trust fund for him. Hello. I'm ready. Claire, dear, how's it going? Not very well, I'm afraid. Mm, never mind, there's always tomorrow. That's what I'm afraid of. Chin up. Good night. Good, Good night, night. Sheila. Yes, speaking. You can read, can't you? Yes, I can read. Who is this? I told you in my letter not to call the police. You disobeyed me. Well, Miss Avery, now you take the consequences. Take a last, long look in your mirror. At least she wants to work. Perhaps that'll help to take her mind off it. Let's hope so. Mr. Sentinel, at no time, on or off the set, is she to be left alone. Someone must be with her constantly. Okay. And no clue to that voice? Well disguised. Claire has said she'd never heard it before. I can't believe it's all going to happen again. I saw Marcia's face a short time after acid was thrown. 
Now you can understand how Claire's feeling. She's absolutely terrified. There. How's that? That's fine, thanks, Pearl. Something troubling you, Miss Avery? I just didn't sleep very well. I hope you're not nervous about this picture, because you're going to be fabulous. Everybody says so. And the one or two people who don't, I won't mention any names, are just plain jealous. You know how jealous people can be in this crazy business. If anybody gets a chance. What's that? What's what, Miss Avery? In that. What, this? A new kind of hair lacquer I just got it this morning. Miss Avery, what's wrong? Stay away from me. Simon! Miss Avery, what's the matter? In that tin. I'm sorry. I'm so upset. I don't know what I'm doing. Pay no attention. Go ahead. Use it. You sure? I mean, if you don't want it. Claire, your back's in silver. You're facing Barry. Go ahead. You've got your money. You've got your money and your house, so you'd live with it. That's all you want. Turn your back on him. Pick up a suitcase. Second she turns her back. You take the gun from the drawer. Put that down. You're not walking out. Right. Bang! That's it. Now, the audience must know how you feel about it. Right. Now, we're still on the red light, so keep it quiet. Tell him over. Tell him over. Speed. Mark it. 134, take one. Act! You got your money and this house? So live with it. That's all you want. Put that down. You're not walking out. Don't be stupid. Drop that gun and nobody move. <laughs> so what's your explanation? I just don't understand it, sir. I knew we were doing this scene this afternoon, so as soon as I got back from lunch, I got the gun, I cleaned it, I put the blanks in it, as usual, and put it in the desk drawer according to the script. Well, I could have killed that! What time did you get back from lunch? About a quarter to two. And you filmed the scene at what? 2.45. So, the gun was on the desk drawer from about two o'clock to 2.45. Yes, sir. Available to anybody in the unit who wanted to substitute a real bullet for the blank cartridge. I suppose so, sir. Hmm. Do you see anybody touch it? Only Mr. Olden. I didn't touch it until we did the scene. Correction. You used it during rehearsal. Oh, yes. You're not particularly happy about doing this film with Claire Avery, are you, Mr. Olden? No, I'm not. And I made myself perfectly clear to Mr. Sentinel yesterday, but he wouldn't listen to me. So I tried to kill her. If you did my job, sir, you wouldn't joke about death. And the fact remains, somebody tried to kill Miss Avery. Well, it wasn't me. All right, you may both go now. Thank you, sir. Virtue outraged, eh? Well, sometimes it's genuine. I'm going to check on Claire. The inspector's about an hour and 20 minutes left. I'd like to get on and do a couple of shots on Irene Cromwell. Any objections? No, no, not at all. Well, as I watched you working, you care to come watch me? Yes. Yes, I would, yes. Nurse, how is she? She's resting. I gave her a tranquilizer. But you've not to disturb her. I'll just pop my head around the door. Don't you be naughty. You'll do as you're told. Yes, nurse. Okay. Okay. When you're ready to leave, I'll take you home. Simon, who hates me enough to put a real bullet in that gun? We'll know soon. Now you rest and I'll be back.
Thank you, nurse. If I'd been looking after you when you were a little boy, you'd have known to do as you're told. Well, I'll try and be good next time. Washington. Well, I've got to get tomorrow's call sheet out. The show must go on. And I wish I knew why. Oh, that's clear. She's resting. Yeah, well, we'll all be resting if this business isn't cleared up soon. We are doing our best. Let me know if you need any help. She all right? Yeah, she's resting. You know, Mr. Sandal, the way I see it. This whole thing's been a softening up process to scare her. Now I think our man is ready for the final pitch. Miss Avery? Are you all right? Is there anything I can get you? No, thanks. Oh, yes. Could you get me a cup of tea? I think you have to go to the canteen to get it. Of course. But you keep your door locked, mind. All right. It won't be a minute. Cut it. Very nice, Irene. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Bring three and five. Check Wrap it up. Please. Check the gate. Gate, okay. Are you taking Claire home? As soon as she's ready, yes. I shall be in my office if you want to see me before you go. Okay, fine, thanks. You find it interesting, all this? Oh, yes, yes, very. Uh, uh, surprising you have to do so much for so little. Uh, I mean the amount of the uh, content. Good night. Good night. Uh, well, uh, there's no point in my hanging around here. I'll be out in, uh, again tomorrow. That is, if they'll let you in after that handmade little brick you just dropped. Good night. Good night. Hello? Where's the money? Who are you? Never mind who I am. Will you please stop ringing me? That 5,000 must be put under the microphone cover tonight. Otherwise, your face will be covered in acid. Will it be there? Yes. Tonight. Tonight. Can I see you a moment, Mike? Have you still got that five thousand pounds? Yes. Can you lend it to me? Why? Mike, I'll pay it back. Another letter. Claire, if you've heard from this man, Templar and Inspector Carlton must be told. Please don't argue with me. I beg you, lend me the money.
Mr. Sentinel? Or it's Simon Templer. Would you take Claire home for me? Apologize, say something came up. Thanks. That it was you who threw acid in her face. I didn't. And you're going to do exactly the same thing to Miss Avery. All I did was send the note asking for the money. I couldn't throw acid in anyone's face. Why do you need the money? You're well paid. Better than most people of your age. Are you gambling? Well, are you? You're joking, of course. I'm in debt from one end of London to the other. Mr. Sentinel, I've been with you for a long time. Get the little black man out of my sight, will you, Inspector? I think how he destroyed that beautiful face. I swear I had nothing to do with Marcia. Get him out. Oh, come on. Mr. Templer, you know how I felt about her. Tell them I didn't hurt Marcia. Make them believe me. Do you think that Marcia killed herself because of what I don't that think did? that Johnny threw the acid at Marcia Landon. He's been blackmailing Claire to pay off his gambling debts. And you do the same to Marcia. Was any threatening letter to Marcia ever found? No, not as far as I know. She would have told you if she'd had one. Of course. Then we must look for another motive, mustn't we? Do you know who'll inherit all her money and her flat and furniture and things? She only took the flat for six months. That's still locked up until her will is probated. As for her money and her personal effects, I suppose her brother will get that. What do you know about him? Apart from the fact he's in a Birmingham nursing home. Nothing. I've never met him. I've never met anybody else who has either. Oh. Well, we'll have to change all that. I'll tell you what he's like when I get back from Birmingham.
Mr. Templer. Mr. Landon. I hope I haven't kept you waiting, but I've been getting some exercise. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you mind if I get right to the point? Go ahead. Presumably, you know the story behind your sister's death. You mean the acid in the face? Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, another actress named Claire Avery, has been threatened with the same thing. I thought you might be able to help me. How? Oh. By telling me about your sister. Do you mean the girl? Or the legend? The girl? Well, we grew up together in a Birmingham orphanage. I became a professional football player, a celebrity. Marcia loved that. The day she left for London and drama school, I was in an automobile accident. Both hips crushed. I'm sorry. Anyway, Marcia started on the way up. She went fast and she went far. I became a, a burden. Well, she was just a kid, you know. I had some money, and when that ran out, she settled a trust fund on me. Enough to pay my expenses here for the rest of my life. But there was a condition. Oh? What condition? Well, I had to agree to stay out of her life completely. Never to communicate with her in any way. Not even to let on. I knew who she was. Why? Marcia had many men in her life. Producers, directors. It didn't matter to Marcia. So long as they helped her fight her way to the top. She didn't want the field cluttered up with a cripple. Was one of these men in her life Mike Sentinel? Yes, very much so. She even wrote to me about him. If he'd get a divorce, she wanted to marry him. I was very sorry I couldn't give my permission. Permission? Yes, you see, you have one detail wrong. What detail? Well, we grew up in a Birmingham orphanage together, all right. But I'm not Marcia Landon's brother. I'm her husband. Kept you waiting? Nope. Just the second got back. What on earth were you doing in Birmingham? Confirming a suspicion. Johnny didn't throw the acid. Well, who did? That's what I'm going to find out. Do you mind if we make a detour on the way home? Where? Marcia's flat. Well, how are we going to get in? Have you got a key? Nope. She used to stand here for hours at night, watching the cars go by. People coming home from work, going out for the evening. Somehow it feels as if she's still here. Where's the mirror? I couldn't bear to see her face as it really was. Who knew she used to be? Same note you had. Five thousand pounds or your face. So it was Johnny. He threatened Marcia too. This is made up from clippings from yesterday's paper. Look at the date. It's less than a day old. It couldn't possibly have been used to threaten Marcia. It doesn't make sense. Don't you see, this was planted in this flat in the last 24 hours. But for what reason? To make absolutely sure that Johnny Newman would be convicted of throwing acid in Marcia Landon's face. And whoever planted this letter must have a key to this flat. 
I found this note myself, Mr. Sentinel, just half an hour ago, in Marcia Landon's flat. Now, how did it get there? I've no idea. I have. It was planted there by someone who has a key. You're not suggesting that I would... Why should I? Have you a key? Of course not. Marcia Landon was cruelly and horribly disfigured. Johnny Newman had nothing to do with it. But you had. That's absurd. You have a key to her flat, haven't you? Haven't you? And you were in love with her. Yes. But I haven't been back to her flat since she died. Mrs. Sentinel. I'm sorry to have to compromise your husband in front of you. But did you know how he felt about Marcia? No. You're lying. You did know. It was you, wasn't it? Me. Deep in the back of my mind, I suspected it. When it was so horrible, I couldn't face it. The night it happened, you were out. Dressed as a man, waiting in the dark. I was out of my mind with jealousy. She was corrupt, Mike. She was taking you away from me. You put the bullet in that gun at the studio, didn't you? I had to frighten Claire, or she'd have done the same thing. And did you mean just to frighten Marcia, too? Jenny, key please. Good morning, Miss Avery. You know, Miss Avery, every time I see you, I think how much you look like Marcia Landon. Thank you. Wasn't she fabulous? Yes, fabulous. <laughs> 